This is our final lesson for sequences, series, and mathematical induction. We're at lesson 14.6, and we're going to combine strategies. We're going to solve non-routine problems for sequences or series. If you haven't seen the previous 14 videos, and you become lost or confused, my advice is to go back and check this description, try to find out where you started losing your place, and watch the videos and catch up. We've learned several strategies in this playlist for Algebra 2. Most problems are solved by using a combination of strategies, and we know that many problems can be solved in more than one way. So we've learned these strategies, how to write an equation, make an organized list, use logical reasoning, draw a diagram, make a table, simplify the problem, try, test, revise, which is the same thing as guess and test. We could look for a pattern, or we could even work backwards. So here's the problem we're going to try to solve. How many rectangular arrays can be built using 36 blocks if all the blocks must be used? Well, we can use simplify the problem, that strategy, and draw a diagram to help us understand the problem. If we simplify the problem, instead of using 36 blocks, we'll just use 6. So how many rectangular arrays can be built using 6 blocks if we use all the blocks? We draw some diagrams. We can make a 1 by 6. It's one row of 6 blocks. We can make one column of 6 as a 6 by 1. We can do a 2 by 3, two rows of 3 columns. We could also do a 3 by 2, three rows of 2 columns, couldn't we? We can make and carry out a plan. So for a large number of blocks, we can simplify the problem, draw diagrams, we can look for a pattern and then make a table. So if we look for a pattern from our diagrams that we draw, here's one block that makes a, a one by one, doesn't it? Two blocks, we get two arrays, a one by two and a two by one. For three blocks, we get two arrays, a one by three and a three by one. For four blocks, we get three arrays. For five blocks, it goes back down to two arrays, because it's an odd number, right? We can't make a nice square like this. It needs to be a rectangular array. For six blocks, we end up with four arrays. So we make a table from our diagrams, and this is what we end up with. Here's the number of blocks, we're going up to 10, and the number of arrays that we can make. So for six blocks, we have four arrays, okay? Remember? We've got a 1 by 6, a 6 by 1, a 2 by 3, and a 3 by 2. So there's four of them, okay? Six blocks, there's four arrays. Well, the first number in each array is a factor of 6. We've got a 1, 2, 3, 6. There's four factors and four arrays. If we test this pattern with other numbers in the table, we'll discover, discover that it is always true. When we had four blocks, we had three arrays, okay? We had a 1 by 4, a 2 by 2, and a 4 by 1. We had three factors, a 1, a 2, and a 4. Look at that. Three arrays, three factors. So if we find the factors of 36, we know how many rectangular arrays we can make without having to make the table go all the way to 36 and without having to draw all those diagrams. So the factors for 36 are a 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 factors. That means there's 9 possible rectangular arrays using 36 blocks. See how I did that? The first number in each array is a factor of the number of blocks. And if it works with other numbers, then we know it'll work for 36. See? Now here's one, it's a little bit famous. Uh, I've changed the wording. The access code to a locked door was a four digit number. So this could be a pin number, it could be, you know, any four digit number. The number is the smallest integer that can be written as the sum of two positive cubes in two different ways, and the number is between 1,000 and 2,000, what is the access code? 
So if we break this down, we need two positive cubes, so no negatives are allowed, and it's the sum, so we know we're going to be adding these. And the sum has to be between 1,000 and 2,000. Then we need two other cubes that make that same number. So we need to add two amounts to get a sum between 1,000 and 2,000 that will get the same sum for adding two different amounts, okay? So we can make a list. We can make an organized list of all the sums between 1,000 and 2,000 and look for two same sums. That's what I did. I started with 1 cubed, which is a 1, isn't it, plus 10 cubed. That gave me 1,001. And I slowly went down and only came up with sums that were between 1,000 and 2,000. Because if they weren't, we can't use them anyway, right? So I tried to find sums that would land me between 1,000 and 2,000, and I came up with these, and the two that I got were 1 cubed plus 12 cubed. That gave me a 1,729, or a 1,729 for the access code. And if I add 9 cubed plus 10 cubed, I get 1,729, or 1,729 for the access code. See? So by making an organized list, I was able to find the two different ways to come up with the sum between 1,000 and 2,000 by adding two of these together. So we got a 1 cubed plus a 12 cubed. We've got a 9 cubed plus a 10 cubed. Now, numbers that are the smallest number that can be expressed in the sum of two cubes in n distinct ways, they're called taxicab numbers. There's going to be a link in this description for more information and the story of how they got this name, okay? 1729 is actually kind of a popular number, all right? Our very next lesson is the fundamental counting principle. We're going to be in Chapter 15 about counting and probability, so we'll be at 15.1a for the beginning of the first lesson for Chapter 15, all right? I hope this playlist has been helpful for you, and I hope if you were confused, you went back and watched the videos that you needed, and I'm proud of you for watching math videos on YouTube, and you could be watching cat videos, couldn't you? But here you are, watching a math video about math strategies, so good for you, and I'll see you next time. Bye!